Another dark relationship Satanists have is with fascist ideology. It is known that fascism bases its basic philosophy on social Darwinism. According to fascism, the world is an arena of a conflict and a fight for life among the various races. For fascists, bloodshed, war, and causing pain to other people are both a sacred duty and a source of pleasure. Another point in common between fascism and Satanism is their admiration for the 19th century atheist and anti-religious philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche's writings are filled with hatred for monotheistic religions. He called himself the Antichrist and went insane before he died. In his writings he attacked the moral virtues of love, compassion and mercy and held that, in their place, the world should be ruled by brute force and those who had power should exercise that rule. Today, Satanists and neo-Nazis are united in their admiration for Nietzsche. They also cooperate with one another. Two priests of the Church of Satan, Anton LaVey and Blanche Barton, gave an interesting answer when asked about the connection between them and the fascist organization. It's an unholy alliance. Many different types of such people have made contact with us in the past. The anti-Christian strength of National Socialist Germany is part of the appeal to Satanists. The drama, the lighting, the choreography with which they moved millions of people. Aesthetics more than anything else are the common ground between Satanism and Fascism. The aesthetics of National Socialism and Satanism dovetail. The aesthetic referred to by Barton is actually nothing more than the ugliness and repulsiveness reflected by the spiritual condition of these two dark ideologies. One of the best examples of the Satanist understanding of aesthetics can be seen in concerts and video clips by heavy metal groups that have adopted this philosophy. For example, one of the best known Satanist fascist music groups, Cradle of Filth, always bases its themes on filth, repulsion and darkness. The group's video clips are recorded in dank, dark places whose floors are covered with mud and tar and whose walls drip with blood and filth. The group members put repulsive and frightening makeup on their faces and wear clothes redolent of filth and homosexuality. In their concerts, the group insult religion. Members of the audience tear up religious books and the group's soloist, Marilyn Manson, suggests to his fans that they assault their own families, society, and religious institutions. In 1995, when asked in an interview what he thought about evolution, he replied, I tend to believe in social Darwinism, so I believe the evolution of society. I guess I believe to a certain degree the Darwin theory. I'm not, however, open to the idea of Genesis and creationism. It doesn't work for me. It is obvious that the philosophy that drives people to become Satanists is atheism, and the theory it is rooted in is Darwin's theory of evolution. This outmoded theory that defines human beings as a collection of animals is the greatest cause of the rapid spread of Satanism throughout the world. It is important that we learn from this. Those who wonder how Satanism could spread among high school students should have a look at high school textbooks. They will see that Darwin's theory of evolution, the greatest support for Satanism, is imposed on the children in these books.
As we have seen in this film, the starting point of Satanism is when people distance themselves from religion. Religion enjoins people to follow the way of God who created them and this way requires love, tolerance, compassion, mercy, and self-sacrifice. Those who deny God and consider themselves to be idle, wild animals will be aggressive, selfish, and without pity. And for a person who espouses this ugly morality, it is enough for him to fall under the influence of Satanism's mystical atmosphere to become a Satanist. For this reason, we know that the struggle against Satanism is really a struggle of ideas. The way to protect young people from this perverted ideology is to teach them about God's existence and about the truth and beauty of religion. And this will refute the atheist, materialist philosophies that alienate them from religion and save them from deception such as Darwinism. In the Quran, God reveals that Satan and his teachings will have no influence over those who sincerely believe. He has no authority over those who believe and put their trust in their Lord. He only has authority over those who take him as a friend and associate others with God. Satanists should know that Satan is deceiving them. And it changes nothing whether Satanists see him as a symbol or believe him to be real. Through his nonsensical and illogical teaching, Satan is leading many people to destruction. And when people are raised from the dead on the last day to account for their deeds, Satan will reject his foolish followers and abandon them. God states this in a verse in the Quran. When the affair is decided, Satan will say, God made you a promise, a promise of truth. And I made you a promise, but broke my promise. I had no authority over you, except that I called you and you responded to me. Do not, therefore, blame me, but blame yourselves. I cannot come to your aid, nor you to mine. I reject the way you associated me with God before. The wrongdoers will have a painful punishment.